This week, the UN Global Compact is uh, launching with the partners the Global Africa Business Initiative, which aims to create a new roadmap for Africa that highlights uh, business opportunities and development across sectors. The UN Global Compact Partnership brings together business, political and cultural leaders to chart a path forward for equitable growth of a $2.5 trillion market. Now, the launch event, which, is, which took place today, actually, uh, is happening during the uh, United Nations Assembly and is organized by the UN Global Compact in partnership with the African Union, the UNDP Africa, the UN Economic Commission for Africa, and the UN Office of the Special Advisor on Africa. Well, to tell us a little bit more, I spoke uh, to UN Assistant Secretary General, uh, also Executive Director and CEO of uh, UN Global Compact, Sanda Ojiambo, a little before the event started. Perhaps we can start with the UN Global Compact itself. What is it? What is it that you try and do? Right, you know, simply put, Peter, um, the UN Global Compact really works to get businesses to be more responsible, to, to, to look critically at issues such as the environmental footprint, the human rights uh, work, their work around anti-corruption, but in so doing, just help businesses become more competitive, more resilient, and at the end of the day, also contribute to the UN Sustainable Development Goals. So it's really about principled business, resilient business, competitive business, and business with purpose. So we have a group of about 16,000 companies worldwide with which we work, always growing that movement, but it's really about business with purpose. So this week you launched the Global Africa Business Initiative. Uh, what is, so give us some of the background as to why this initiative was set up. Yeah, and you know, part of it is to, to provide a platform where African heads of state, African private sector, friends of Africa, philanthropists, all those interested in doing business with, investing with the African continent can come together and I think really examine the opportunity and the potential and the promise of the African continent. Oftentimes when you hear about Africa, it's in the context of humanitarian work or development work. But at the same time, if you look at the continent, it's the, it's the future for consumerism. It has 1.3 billion people, you know, the GDP is on the up and up at $3.5 trillion. I mean, you know, it's really the continent of promise for the future. We have businesses and big businessmen that are doing great business on the continent. So the idea is to focus on the opportunities on the African continent, but also more importantly, have the story told by these African private sector leaders or African heads of state. And that's really the platform that we're creating. So we have two days of, of discussion and forums led by uniquely African business and political leaders to show the potential and highlight where we need to make those investments to move the continent forward. And who are they talking to, uh, particularly uh, in these two days of the conference? Right, so they're gonna talk to other African business leaders, African heads of state, African representatives, Friends of Africa, it's a global forum. So in the room we'll also have global business leaders, we'll have investors, uh, we'll have philanthropy, um, you know, the event is being live streamed. So actually, ultimately, we're going to talk to the world um, because it's really about bringing the world to shine the light on the opportunities that lie on the African continent. A lot of these initiatives require some political will. You mentioned heads of state. Are the politicians fully on board, not just to arrive and take the register, but to actually get things done afterwards? You know, that's that's the that's a dialogue and that's a platform we want to create. So, you know, we kick off with the Secretary General. We have the chairperson of the African Union, Musa Faki, is going to be there. We have some heads of state. We have missions and representatives. What we want to do is build, you know, a movement, a platform that will exist above and beyond simply the convenings. One of the ways that we know we have that commitment is that from a forward-looking perspective, we also want to hold these convenings on the continent and in regions. So we will have to build that traction, that political leadership. But over time, you know, uh, what we hear more and more from heads of state is they do want African private sector around the table. They realize that business brings a unique lens to solving problems, you know, innovation, uh, speed to market, a better understanding of how to perhaps execute problems, the ability to mobilize uh, capital and financing. So I think the time is right. And we will have that really good public-private partnership commitment around it. One hears about these kinds of gatherings. I mean, what's new and unique about 
this initiative that you're you're putting together? First of all, as I said, you know, to have this convening, it's outside of the UN, it's framed through a private sector lens, but it brings together all the players I've talked about. This is what is unique about it. Heads of state, private sector, philanthropy all come together. That's the very first. The second that makes it unique, I think, is the focus and the lens that we put on it. That is not about, you know, we will own Africa's problems, but it's about what then is the opportunity for the future. Um, and shining that light on the potential for investment and for progress on the African continent. So two things, lots of stakeholders and a unique focus on the private sector leading the agenda forward for Africa. How does it fit in with things like the Africa Continental Free Trade Area Agreement? Because that's another thing, isn't it? That uh, another layer of uh, trying to get uh, business across the continent to work uh, together uh, as a group. You know, that agreement fits right into our agenda. We do have a session, actually, the head of the, the, the Continental Free Trade Agreement. And, you know, we are really going to discuss the need to address the policy barriers that limit trade, not only on the continent, but Globally, um, trade is going to be key, for, and it's a key part of this discussion. We also have uh, Dr. Ngozi of WTO who will be joining us as well, and lots of African business leaders who recognize the opportunities to further the way that we do trade intra-country and, uh, and globally as well. Trade is a big part of the agenda. All right, perhaps as a final question, uh, what will success look like for you at the end of this launch and uh, these uh, two days of deliberation? Right. Success for us first is, is a great discussion where we own problems, highlight the challenges and highlight the opportunities. We have a great group of speakers and a great audience, but, you know, it doesn't end there. For us, what we do want to look at is how we then sit and chart the way forward uh, with some key outcomes. I think, you know, key work streams already that emerge is financing because financing seems to, a barrier, it seems to be a barrier to a lot of the progress we need to make. What does trade look like for the future? What happens around climate and climate action? because we have the climate conference coming up in November in, in Egypt as well. So what we're able to articulate in terms of African private sector positions, but thereafter in the course of the year, be able to take these lessons and, and these, this cohort of business leaders onto the African continent and stimulate dialogue and alignment with the private sector as well um, in country. So it's an ongoing conversation championed by the private sector with action that we hope will help change policy, help change business behavior, but most importantly, put together all of the key stakeholders, the public sector, the private sector, to redrive drive Africa's uh, story forward. The other thing that we do want to shift is the narrative about the African continent, because there's so much potential that the story always gets lost in global crises or in other crises. And really, I think the time is, uh, the time is here to shine the light on the potential and the progress of the African continent. Assistant Secretary General, Executive Director and CEO of UN Global Compact, Ms. Sanda Ojiamba, thank you so much indeed uh, for joining us. And uh, we wish you the best with the launch and the conference itself. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for having me.